Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. We have recently spent some time with the 2024 Toyota Tundra with the iForce Max Twin Turbo Hybrid V6 powertrain. And so today we've got a special presentation, a cross pollination of sorts from our partner channel, TDTV Garage, where we do a lot of nuts and bolts stuff and talk about how things work, do mechanical overviews and really get into the weeds about what's under the hood and how everything goes together. And that's exactly what we're doing today. We have a complete underhood tour of the Tundra with the iForce Max V6, outlining all the major technical features and most importantly, the do-it-yourself maintenance service points. The 2022 and newer Toyota Tundra iForce Max hybrid powertrain starts with the very same 389 horsepower auto cycle 3.4 liter twin turbocharged all aluminum V6 engine that's found in non-hybrid Tundra pickups. With 479 pound-feet of torque, the engine features dual overhead cams with variable timing, both direct and port fuel injection, and an air-to-water intercooler system for its boosted air charge. Setting the iForce Max Hybrid apart is a 48 horsepower electric motor generator sandwiched between the V6 and its 10-speed automatic transmission, which is powered by a 1.87 kilowatt hour nickel metal hydride battery pack located under the rear seat. Together, this parallel hybrid system produces a total system 437 horsepower, 583 pound-feet of torque, and burns baseline 87 octane fuel. In the 2024 Tundra Limited 4x4 we tested, it's rated by the EPA at 19 miles per gallon city, 22 highway, and 20 miles per gallon combined. A look around the engine compartment shows a few key differences, starting with the hybrid power converter and control unit mounted high against the firewall at the passenger side, where you might expect to find the 12 volt battery. Instead, the 12 volt battery is located under the rear seat at the driver's side adjacent to the high voltage hybrid battery assembly, which itself has a rating of about 650 volts. Also unique to the hybrid is a high voltage electrically driven AC compressor instead of the belt driven unit, which allows cool air to continue flowing even when the gasoline engine isn't running. Altogether, with all of these components, the Tundra Hybrid weighs an average of 600 pounds more than the non hybrid version. Following the airflow, there are actually two separate air filter boxes and intake systems, one on each side. For simplicity, we'll follow one which routes the intake charge to one of the two turbochargers and from there up to the air to water intercooler mounted high atop the engine. Traveling through the intercooler, the air then passes through a throttle body at the rear, then down underneath to the main intake manifold, which is mostly hidden from view, as is the majority of the dual fuel injection system Toyota calls D4S. After combustion takes place, the spent exhaust then exits at the bottom side of each cylinder bank and directly into the aforementioned turbochargers, which are actually very hard to see on this thing with its tight packaging. From there, it then goes through computer-controlled wastegates and directly into the catalyst exhaust system. The packaging is obviously quite tight. Do-it-yourself maintenance for routine service is relatively straightforward. To start with, there are three coolant reservoirs. The first is at the passenger side firewall and it's for the hybrid control system. Next are the two reservoirs located at the top front of the engine bay. The one on the left is for the air to water intercooler and the one on the right is the main engine cooling. The engine oil filler cap can be found on the top left side of the engine and the oil dipstick is located on the top right. Both can be easily accessed and used with or without the engine sound cover in place, an item that easily snaps on and off. The oil filter is mounted down low and must be accessed from underneath, however. Both of the air filters are easily accessed for checking and changing by simply popping a couple of clips. No tools are required. It's quite easy, in fact. You just pop them, you open it up, out comes the filter, in goes the new one, and you're done. You just got to do it twice. And Always make sure to do both of those at the same time. As easy as this is, there's absolutely no reason to spend any money at your dealership for this. And believe me, they will charge you. Now, if you're looking for the main consumer grade fuse box, it's located at the passenger side, just behind that air filter with a fuse removal tool found inside. The windshield washer fluid cap can be found at the driver's side front of the engine bay sitting atop a long vertical tube that routes it to a tank, which itself is mounted down low and out of sight. 
Brake fluid is checked and topped off at the driver's side firewall location as expected. Although this is a bit more modern than before, the reservoir sits atop an electronically controlled brake pump and is immediately adjacent to the ABS control unit. Now changing the spark plugs on this engine appears to be a completely unfun job, a very involved process as the majority of them are hidden beneath several other components which will need to come out and be removed out of the way before you can even get to them. This is a job that's probably best reserved for experienced and patient hands and hands that have a good collection of tools. There's a reason that dealership is charging upwards of $500 plus to change these things out. A couple of important notes when working around the engine bay start with the bright orange cables which connect the hybrid battery to its various components. Always avoid handling these as they carry up to 650 volts and are not typically user serviceable anyway. The main engine cooling fan here is belt driven by the engine in a more traditional setup and is not going to be a hazard to your hands unless the engine's running. There are however additional auxiliary electric cooling fans at the front of the radiator package which can power up at any time, though they are mounted in a place where it's unlikely your hands will be roaming. Well, there you go, my friends, an underhood tour of the Toyota Tundra iForce Max with a twin turbocharged hybrid powertrain under its hood. It's not a V8 anymore, man. And having tested this and driven it, I can tell you that it's very powerful, even though it's a small engine. But if you're looking at getting under this hood and doing some work on this, maybe some do-it-yourself maintenance, there's a lot going on there quite clearly, especially if you're planning on changing those spark plugs. Ouch. <laughs> so this is a video that is quite representative of what we do over at our partner channel, TDTV Garage. You can just go to YouTube, TDTV Garage to find that, but we also have a playlist right here that shows everything we do right here inside TDTV. And so you can go sample it, basically everything that we test we have an under the hood tour and sometimes more detailed technical explanations on. So there you go. 